Hello and welcome to Shredder Zoo. Today we are taking a closer look at an animal that went extinct quite recently compared to some of the others here at the zoo, the woolly mammoth. The woolly mammoth is often seen as the poster animal of the Ice Age, which took place during the Pleistocene period, which saw a series of glaciations across the upper latitudes of the Northern Hemisphere and an overall reduction in global temperatures. The large and often exceptional level of preservation of some remains have revealed more about this prehistoric animal than many others. The habitat of the woolly mammoth is known as Mammoth Steppe or as Tundra Steppe. This environment stretched across northern Asia, many parts of Europe and the northern part of North America. It was similar to the grassy steppes of modern Russia, but with a more diverse and abundant flora that grew faster. This habitat was not dominated by ice and snow, as is properly believed, since these regions are thought to have been high pressure areas at the time. They would have been cold and dry grasslands with occasional snow cover. Woolly mammoths are closely related to modern Asian elephants. The two species shared a common ancestor around 6 or 7 million years ago, about the same time as the common ancestor between chimps and humans. There are some obvious differences between the woolly mammoth and modern elephants. First and most obvious is the growth of the long shaggy coat of hair over its body, the longest strands of which being up to a metre long. These long hairs covered a denser growth of underhair that provided the main insulation, which in turn covered the skin which had a thick layer of fat underneath it to provide even further insulation from the cold. Still the adaptions went further, as the skin itself had sebaceous glands that would have secreted sebum, an oily substance primarily composed of dead fat cells into the hair. Sebum has a number of functions that help maintain skin and hair integrity, but the most important to mammoths is that the secretion of sebum would have helped to waterproof the long hair and further increase its insulatory properties. Another adaption to the cold environments is the small size of the ears, which are only 30 centimetres long at most. Whereas by contrast, the African elephant has ears that are up to 180 centimetres long. Here it is obvious that the difference is down to thermoregulation. By having bigger ears, the African elephant has a larger surface area to lose body heat through. A very useful adaption for the hot African climate, and the reason why African elephants can be frequently observed flapping their large ears. By contrast, the woolly mammoth would need to conserve as much body heat as it could so by having smaller ears it could reduce the surface area to lose heat through. The woolly mammoth stood about 3 metres tall at the shoulder, about the same as modern African elephants. They had a large hump on the back for fat storage to see them through times when food was scarce. They had huge curved tusks which may have been used for fighting or for digging and looking for food. They could have been used for clearing snow off the ground to get at the grass underneath. A quick note of comparison of the mammoths you see here in Ark to reality, the tusks were not branched or spiked. There have been several news stories recently of how the mammoth may be brought back from extinction using DNA extracted from some of the best preserved specimens and cloning techniques using a modern elephant as a host mother. Some reports even claim this will be done within two years. In reality this simply isn't true. Rather than creating a living breathing mammoth in two years, the scientists were actually talking about creating a mammoth cell in the laboratory. And it wouldn't be a true mammoth, it would be a mammoth-elephant hybrid, or an elephant with some mammoth attributes like cold adaption and long hair and large tusks. There are some major problems with this. In order to revive the woolly mammoth, scientists would have to perform experiments on elephants. First, elephant eggs would be needed for the cloning process. Then, surrogate elephant mothers would be required to nurture the developing embryos in their wombs, then give birth to them and bring them up. Since cloning is an inexact science that produces far more failures than live births, this would put the health of the elephant surrogate at risk. The trouble is that there are so few elephants left. The number of Asian elephants has more than halved over the last three generations because of habitat loss and poaching, and they are classified as endangered. The solution to this is to grow mammoth embryos in an artificial womb. This has been partially successful with mice embryos, but still remains a long way off. But why did mammoths go extinct? Most mammoths disappeared during the late Pleistocene and early Holocene, alongside most of the Pleistocene megafauna. 
This extinction formed part of the Quaternary Extinction Event, which began 40,000 years ago and peaked between 14 and 11,500 years ago. The last glaciation of the period seems to have been particularly cold, and although mammoths coped well with previous fluctuations of the environment, other factors were in play at this time. Their open grassland habitat was shrinking as dense forests began to spread, reducing the amount of food available. Also, another common factor which seems disturbingly familiar when I talk about extinction is the appearance of humans. With harsher conditions and reduced areas capable of supporting mammoths on the landscape, the overall population of mammoths would decline to a level that the environment could support. This would magnify the impact from hunting from humans, as the mammoths no longer had the numbers to cover their losses. Eventually, the mammoth population would reach a point where they simply could not recover to their previous numbers and become extinct. The extinction of mammoths did not happen quickly, and small isolated populations did survive on islands much later however, with the most recent currently known being the mammoths of Wrangell Island, a small island in the Arctic Ocean. The tundra here supported woolly mammoths till as recently as 4,000 years ago. Genetic studies done on the remains of these mammoths reveal that the last surviving populations were full of detrimental mutations as a result of continual inbreeding. Some defects have been identified, such as those that would have resulted in the reduction of their sense of smell. Another would have given the Wrangell Island mammoths a translucent cream-coloured satiny coat. The hairs of its fur would have lacked an inner core, possibly robbing them of their insulating properties. Mice with this mutation also suffer from gastric irritation. Studies like this give us an understanding of what might happen to animals facing extinction today. Well, on that rather depressing note, that is all for today and I hope you found this video as fascinating as I did. There is so much more to this topic that I could go on much, much longer, but perhaps I'll save it for another video. As always, I hope you've enjoyed the talk. If you did, please leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you haven't already. I hope to see you next time here at Shredder Zoo. Goodbye.